my name is Victoria Armstrong and I am the owner of Side by Side Consulting Services and I'm here today to share with you um, some ideas for how you can set up a painting area either in your classroom if you're a teacher or at home if you're a parent for toddlers or preschoolers and really how you can just adapt the space um, as your child grows and as they learn to use materials um, independently. And so the key here is how can you set up materials so that children can use them independently um, and be able to learn the process of how do I set up my materials, how do I use them, how do I clean up materials. Um, and so there's ways that you can set up the environment and things that you can put in the environment that can help children to be able to feel confident doing this independently and doing this with each other. So first thing to think about space. It's nice if you're able to either at home or in your, um, in your classroom. If you can find a space that's close to a window, um, I love having um, a painting area near a window. Um, one, because of the natural light that comes in through the windows, which is just so beautiful. Um, and also because it gives children an opportunity to be able to look outside, to see what's going on outside, to see nature. Um, and it's a great way to offer them um, inspiration for their paintings. Um, so if you're able to find a window area where you can set up your, um, your painting area, that's, um, that's really, uh, really lovely, a really lovely addition if you're able to. Um, the other thing is to think about the types of floors that you have. So um, you obviously don't want it to be on a carpeted area, or if you do have a carpeted area and that's the only um, area that you have to be able to set up your painting area, then I like to put down just, um, this is actually an old, um, what do you call it, an old shower curtain, a white shower curtain that um, I wasn't going to use anymore. And so it's become a really great, um, a really great mat that I put on the floor so that if paint gets spilled, um, or water or anything like that. Um, it's a great way to kind of um, contain the spills and such. I can just take it, I can throw it in the wash if I want to. Um, and so it's a great way to kind of also define the space as well too. Um, but if, you, if, you're, if you're in a space where you already have say tile floors, that's really great too. Anywhere that's gonna be really easy to clean up spills or um, water or anything like that. Um, what else? So the other thing is to all, um, it, that's really great in a painting area is to have some kind of an easel and there's lots of different options out there for a variety of different kinds of easels, um, different materials, etc. This easel I really love. Um, it's a plexiglass easel and the reason why I love it is because um, uh, it gives children another surface with which to paint on. So this actual plexiglass right here, the children can paint right on it um, if they want to um, and then it just wipes off. And, and a lot of times that can be um, a fun process as well too. Um, it's just painting on it, wiping it off, painting on it, wiping it off as well too. The other thing that's really nice about a plexiglass e easel if you're able to get one is that um, two children when they're standing at the easel can see each other through it. And so that's just really lovely in terms of children being able to exchange ideas, um, you know, being able to play games around it as well too, and being able to see each other. Um, and it just, you know, it provides, again, if you're able to have it near a window as well too, it just adds a lot of um, lightness and airiness to the area because you can see through it. So um, I love this plexiglass easel for, for that, for those reasons. Um, what else? So when it comes to kind of how I display materials here and the types of materials that I offer, um, you know, I just have some smocks that are kind of hung up on the side here that a child can um, take for themselves. Um, and then, so I have, so if you saw one of my other videos, I talked about um, these carts that I got from Amazon and, and how much I love them. Um, and I use them for a variety of different things. So one of them in this painting area is I have um, all of the painting tools and materials on here. And so I'll just kind of show you some of the things that I have on here. So I have paint in these little squeeze bottles. You can see like this. And they just have little pops that come off like this. And so I love these because um, children can either, they can learn how to squeeze paint independently. And again, it's a process. So you're gonna introduce to the child how, um, how the squeeze bottle works, how you take the lid off, how you squeeze you know, a certain amount into, um, into say a cup that they're gonna paint, or um, if they're gonna paint into a palette, you can show them how to, how to uh, squirt just a little bit of paint into the palette. Um, but again, they're great because children can learn how to use them independently without having to have um, either a teacher or a parent put the paint out for the child. It gives them, um, you know, a lot of freedom to make their own choices in terms of what color they want instead of colors that are kind of already pre-laid out for them. They can choose colors that they want to mix or choose one color or, you know, it's up to the children to choose. And so obviously, depending on the age of the children that you're working with, you'll have to be careful with, you know, the size of the, um, 
lid that is on these is quite small. So if you're working with really, really young toddlers who are still mouthing things, um, you'll want to, you know, be there to help them and show them and, and you know, um, give them a little bit more guidance while they're using these or while they're learning how to use these. Um, for older toddlers who aren't mouthing things anymore, then again, they can learn um, how to take it on and off and, you know, you can know that things are going to be okay and things aren't going to go in the mouth. The other option with that though, however, is um, just buying, you know, there's larger squeeze bottles that have the little, um, the top attached to it. And this is just like a ketchup bottle that you can buy from the dollar store. And um, they're a little bit larger, so, um, you know, great for children that are a little bit older as well too, because it's a little bit bigger for their grip. But again, because it's clear, similar to these bottles, it looks beautiful when you put the paint in them because they can see the colors of paint really easily. And again, they can do it independently in terms of being able to take it off, squeeze the paint they need in, and then put it back either on a shelf or if you have a cart like this. So I love it like that. As children get older, you know, I have them in kind of little bottles like this. And again, there's kind of a range of colors here that children can choose from. So, you know, as their skills grow in terms of being able to pour paint into containers, you know, you can show them how to take off a lid, pour a little bit of paint and put it back, you know, put it back away themselves. So I love paint stored like that. Then on here, I also have just a watercolor paint palette, which you probably saw in my last video. Um, so there's the option for watercolor painting. And then I also have, these are water soluble oil pastels. And so these are beautiful and creamy and just really lovely to draw with. But there, I also include them in this area because if you add a little bit of water to them, they work similar to watercolor paints. And so I like this as another option for children to paint with. So the paint that I have here is a temper paint, um, very uh, easily washable. Um, so that's why I have that temper paint here. I have some watercolor paints, I have some watercolor um, pastels. And then in this container, as you saw from my other, if you saw in my other video, um, this is the bleeding tissue paper. So I have just a little pail of bleeding tissue paper here that children can explore and use as well too. And then I have a container full of paintbrushes, as you can see, full variety of paintbrushes. So I love to have a lot of different kinds of paintbrushes available to children. So I have some, um, really long handled ones here that um, you know adult artists would use um, it gives children you know an opportunity just to paint in a different way to be able to stand back from the easel to paint and so this one is a fan brush this one is a flat brush um, and then i just have a whole variety of different sizes some are really small some are a lot thicker um, i have these great sponge um, sponge brushes that are in a circular form i have some sponge brushes that are in this form um, I have a palette knife, if you're familiar with. Typically use palette knives with acrylic paint because acrylic paint is thicker and you use it to put it on. But I love including it, um, even when working with um, temper paint as well too, because it's just, it's fun to scratch and to make marks through your painting as well too, and just a nice way to introduce kind of a different tool that um, painters use when they're painting. So um, including a variety of different types of brushes, I think is really important for children to really be able to play with the the um, material and learn how paint works, um, not only on different surfaces, but with different types of brushes as well too. Um, then I also just have a variety of paint palettes. These are just little applesauce containers that I've cleaned out, so children kind of have a range of um, um, options for how they want to, what they want to put their paint into. So it could be little cups that they have here, little applesauce cups. Um, perhaps they want to put it in the palette and they want to hold on to the palette as they're painting. Um, I just like to provide it a lot of different options. I also have, and this I got from Ikea, maybe many of you have seen it, it's a roller paint. It's a nice um, small one, so it's a good size for children as well too. Um, so if children want to do some roller painting, this gives them a nice option for roller painting as well too. That's just their size. Um, let's see, what else do I have? So that's the painting card, and that's kind of how I like to organize it. And again, I love these cards because you know the children can kind of move it around. Um, they can have it beside them if they want as they're painting, or they can go get what they need and bring it to the easel. Um, the other thing that I love about having the easel and kind of like the areas marked on the floor is, you know, if children are wanting to not do easel painting, it's easy to just kind of move the easel to the side and then you just have like a big area that's set up that children can do painting on the floor as well too. So, that's the cart. And then I also have this container here where I have just a variety of kinds of um, larger loose parts and materials that children might be interested in painting on. Things that I've just kind of collected. So 
These are um, shampoo, um, baby shampoo bottles, and uh, the tags came right off, so they were white, and so I saw them and I thought, hey, these might make it an interesting canvas to paint on. Tubes, I have some boxes in here. You can see my little guys painted on one of the boxes. Um, different kinds of, there's fabric in there. I have some um, burlap. Burlap is really interesting to paint on as well, too, and it's easy to clip on the easel to paint that too, or to put on the ground and paint. Um, I have some cellophane here, some larger pieces of cellophane. Cellophane is really interesting to paint on as well too, because it's, um, well, it adds a, a noise element as well to it, um, but it's just nice to hang up. You can see through it, you can explore light and color with it as well too. I have some cardboard here. So just kind of a variety of, of things in here that children can choose to paint on. I love these um, stainless steel um, buckets as well too, because if paint gets on them, they wash off really easily as well. And then under the easel is where I store the watercolor paper. So this is like a heavy watercolor paper that's gonna hold any type of um, wet medium that they're gonna explore, whether that's temper paint or watercolor paint or um, any other kind of paint that are the bleeding tissue paper. So look for a thick watercolor um, paper um, that's gonna hold um, the water and the paint that they're using. And then I also have in the back there, you can see the really long, the really long tubes. Um, again, that was a find from um, a family friend who has um, large rolls of fabric, then she didn't need the, the middle part of the tube anymore. So um, if you're able to, you know, just source some really interesting materials that children can paint on, um, the tubes are really fun because they're really, really long and um, they're long and just kind of, you know, a different size to play with. So I can just move the easel aside and put the tubes on the floor and they can paint on the tubes as well too. I have some canvases you'll notice back here as well too, some that um, that are you can paint from <laughs> as well. So it's nice to have just a variety of surfaces that children can paint on. So this is a large canvas. Sometimes I have smaller canvases, um, different size or different shape canvases as well too. Um, so that can kind of all be in the area where children can kind of choose from and what it is that they want to paint on. The other thing that I wanted to mention too is you'll probably see some documentation on the walls as well too. Now if you're an educator in the classroom, you're probably used to documenting, taking photos, etc. And so I always um, love in whatever area of the room I'm in to make sure that I have either documentation panels or photos displayed of how the children are using those materials so that they can be reminded of their ideas. Um, and you know, it gives them, it gives them um, uh, ideas for maybe where they can uh, build on or maybe they can take an idea in a different way or they can just be reminded of what they, what they did in that area and how they use those materials and what they were thinking about and the kinds of questions they had. Um, if you're a parent at home, um, just thinking of how can you, is there a place in your, in your painting area where you can display a few photos of how your children are using the paint um, in those areas, what types of um, we, how were they using the materials, what types of things did they do with those materials, and finding a way to just display them in that area is really nice for children to be able to reflect on what they've done in that area as well too. So, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments um, section below. Um, if you haven't been to my Instagram page and you have Instagram, visit Instagram um, at SBS Consulting Services. I'm going to have pictures, more close-up pictures of um, this painting area so that you can see them a little bit more closer um, in closer detail um, than I was able to do on this video. And um, visit my website www.sbsconsulting.ca. I've got lots of great resources and, um, and tools there for educators, for parents as well too. Um, and if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. I have um, lots more videos coming out. My next video um, is going to be a DIY light table. So if you are an educator in a classroom, light tables can be really costly and really expensive, but they're really fantastic for playing with light and shadow and you know lots of other different concepts. So I'm going to show you how you can make a light table for say $20 that you can put in your classroom. Or if you're um, a parent at home, a light table is really great to explore as well too. So Stay tuned for my next video on how you can make um, your own light table. And um, again, questions or comments, um, type them in the box below and um, or send me an email at victoria.sbsconsulting.ca. Thanks guys.